Hello, in this presentation, we will record sale on account within QuickBooks Pro 2018. If you've been working along with us, that's great. We will be continuing with the Get Great Guitars problem. If not, that's okay. We're going to be creating invoices for the month, invoices from customers for guitars purchased within this month, merchandising inventory. We currently have open windows open. In order to open open windows, we want to go to the view tab and have uh, the open windows list that's going to give you this open item the only open item at this time being the home tab if you want to or the home screen if you want to open the home screen which we recommend doing at this point go to the company and home page if you have the backup file up to this point you can restore it by going to the file and open restore it would be useful to be at the same point in time as we enter this data so we have the same customers same data However, if we don't have access to that or you don't want to, or you haven't gone through the prior uh, examples, that's okay. We can see what would what we're going to do in terms of the creation of an invoice. So we're going to do the normal creation of an invoice here. We're going to create an invoice and that will go through the normal process of receiving a payment on that invoice and then recording a deposit. Story then being that we have someone that's ordering uh, a guitar from us. We're going to create the invoice. We're going to bill the uh, customer at that time, ship out the guitar, expect to receive a payment in the future, at which point we will record the receive payment and then make the deposit. So we're going to go to create invoice. First invoice we're going to create is for mu music store stuff. So we're going to select the drop down. That's our customer. And we see it here, but I'm going to like to type it in first and see that it populates for us. So we're going to type in music store stuff. When we select tab, it will then populate the information. Tabbing through to the date, the date's going to be 021821, so that we will be working within the future. It's going to be the invoice at number 8. Let's go back to the date. So the date's going to be one day up. So we're going to say it's uh, the 19th. So I selected the up arrow one time, 021921. Invoice is the 8th. We have the rest of the inf information. We will remain the same. We're going to go down to the item. We could select the item drop down, this being the inventory item. And we can see all, all of our items in this drop down being our inventory items we would be selling. We're going to type in the ENL, which is the Epiphone Standard Pro. We're going to sell one of those. Tab, tab. It's going to be for the $600. This information being generated from the item list, from the inventory list, and we have the sales tax of the $30 on that. Therefore, the amount due to us as we ship this out is the $630. If we think about what's going to happen when we record this transaction, it's going to increase the accounts receivable. That's what an invoice does. It means accounts receivable will be increased for music store stuff. It means that we're going to credit the other side. Now the increase is going to be for the 630. We're going to increase also the revenue, not for 630, but for the 600. The difference of 30 is going to increase the accounts, uh, not accounts payable, but the sales tax payable, what is owed for the sales tax we are collecting from the customer that will then need to be paid out. And then there's another side to this. That being the inventory must be going down on a perpetual inventory system and the related cost of goods sold, which we don't see the number for on the invoice. If we, not, if we want to know that number, we need to go to the lists, or one way we can do this is go to lists and item list, and we can look for that ELP inventory item, ENLP, and it's going to be this item here. It was the 600 sales price. If we double click on that, it will give us the cost. 480 so that's going to be the other side it's not on the invoice remember but we do want to recognize that it is there so that when we record this when we think about our sales what's the effect on net income we can make that calculation closing this back out closing this back out we're back to our invoice we're going to save and close this and then take a look at it and then record one other invoice doing the same process so we're going to save and close it's always useful anytime you're reporting anything to then go to the reports and see if we understand what QuickBooks is doing. If we can understand what QuickBooks is reporting, that gives us an understanding of what is going on and that, that really helps to, to go through the process of the bookkeeping. So we're going to go to the reports up top. 
We're going to go to Rip Company and Financial and first look at the balance sheet standard. We're going to change the dates. We're going to go to the date range so that uh, when we drill down on the dates, it will then be changed. It's going to be 010121. Uh, we are working in the future to 123121. And we're going to select OK. So there is our items. We're going to go to the receivable. So the receivable is going to increase. Double clicking on the receivable. We see that we have that 630 for music store stuff. Double clicking on that item. We see the invoice. So I'm going to close that back out. Note that that item is for the receivable of the full amount, including the sales tax of 630. Closing this back out. Closing this back out. We're then going to the other side of this, which will be on the profit and loss by going to the home tab, company and financial, profit and loss, changing the date range from 0101212 to 1231-21. There's going to be our item. We have merchandise sales. Double clicking on merchandise sales, we have our 600. If we double click on the 600, we see that invoice once again for the 600 amount, not including the added 30 for the sales tax. Where's that added 30 going to go? That's what we will look at this time. So if we close this back out and close this back out, we're going to go back to the balance sheet. And we're looking for that other 30 that's going to be down in a payable. It's what we owe for sales tax payable to uh, the state. If we double click on that, or any local, whatever, this, whoever was the collector of the sales tax. We owe it to some government entity. And it's going to be the $30. We're going to double click on that 30 And there's the sales tax. Now remember, the sales tax will differ from state to state, place to place. But uh, if there is a sales tax, we're going to record it. And we will then need to record it as a payable universally. And then pay it to whoever is regulating the sales tax. Then we're going to go ahead and close that. Then we have the other side of this happening. That's going to be the cost of goods sold and the inventory going down. So if we scroll back up, we're going to say here is the inventory asset. Double clicking on that. We scroll down. There's the 480. If we double click on the 480, again, it's not seen here. We don't see it anywhere on this particular invoice, but we saw it on the list, the item list, that the, that's the 480, the cost that is being recorded as this generated, as this invoice is recorded, even though it cannot yet be seen. So we're going to go ahead and close that out. One other item, closing this out, is going to be on the profit and loss or the income statement, that being the cost of goods sold. Here's the cost of goods sold. Double clicking on that. We scroll to the end. There's the 480. Double clicking on that there's our invoice once again. So if we close this back out, we're going to do this one more time and we'll see this process one more time. Back to the home tab, we're going to create a, another invoice. So it's going to be creating another invoice. Customer will be Smith Guitars. If we select the drop down, we can select the uh, customer in that format or we can start typing in and that will populate and select tab, tab. This is going to be on the 20th, so we're going to just, I'm just selecting the plus arrow one time to move up to the 20th. The invoice should populate automatically. We're going to keep the rest of the information, and then we're going to say that it's going to be a wild DKAT. So if I select the drop down, we can see the information here to look for it, but if we know the information, we can start typing it in. And there it is. So we're going to say tab, and that happens to be an Epiphone semi Hollywood. Uh, Very nice sounding guitar. So we're going to say that's going to be one of those, and it's going to be for 400. And then, of course, we have the sales tax again at 25% of that 400, meaning we've got the 420. If we think about the transaction once we record this, receivables going to increase by the 420. The sales is going to increase only by the 400. The difference of 20 will increase what we owe then to uh, whoever's collecting the sales tax. It's going to be a payable, a liability. Then we're also going to have inventory decreased by an amount that's not on here. And the related cost of goods sold increased by the amount not on here. And therefore the 400 minus that cost of goods sold will be the net effect on net income. If we want to know what that amount is, we got to go to lists. 
We've got to go to, or there's one way we can do it, item lists. And we're looking for that wild here. And that's the 400 that we're selling it for. If we double click on it, then we can see the cost is 320. So that's the cost of goods sold we should see once we record this. Closing this back out, closing this back out. We see the invoice, we're gonna say uh, save and close, and then go to our reports, starting with balance sheet. On the balance sheet, we see the accounts receivable. Accounts receivable should be going up by the, this invoice. If we double click on it, there's the 420. Double clicking on that, we see the invoice. There's the full 420, the full amount that's being increased, including the sales tax. We're gonna close this back out. Look at the other side on the profit and loss, that being the revenue side, profit and loss. Merchandise sales, there it is, double clicking on that. We see the 400, double clicking on that. There's our same invoice, the 400 not including the sales tax. Let's see where that sales tax is at. Closing this back out, going to the balance sheet once again, looking for the liability section, looking for the sales tax payable. We see the three, uh, 223.37, double clicking on that. There's the 20, double clicking on that. There's the invoice once again, the 20 going to the sales tax. Closing this back out. We're gonna close this back out. Then we're gonna look for the other side. So, so we're gonna scroll at, back up to assets. We're looking for the inventory asset. Double clicking on the inventory asset. We see the item 320. If we double click on it, we see our same invoice, but not the 320. That 320 not being here, although it does being generated by this invoice. So remember, we are seeing that perpetual inventory system being recorded, although the 320 is not being on this invoice. It is uh, recorded through the recording of this invoice driven by the item when we set up the item. Closing that back out, one more side of this, closing this back out. Back on the profit and loss, we're gonna go back to the cost of goods sold, double click on that item, there's the 320 again, double clicking on that, there's our invoice. Closing this back out, closing this back out. Note too that if we want to see the customers that owe us this money and track by customer, we can go to reports, customers and receivables, and scroll down to the customer balance detail. And we know that we had the, let's see, music store stuff owed us money. Uh, I believe that was the 630. And the one we just created was for uh, Smith Guitars for the 420. So if we look at that 420, double clicking on that, we see that same invoice, what it's owed to us, including the sales tax in the receivable under the receivable by customer in essence, customer balance detail. And of course, that is what is owed to us by Smith at this time.